So far, we've been working on a fairly boring web page. We added in hyperlinks, which added in something to our website, but coming into this website, there's just a lot of text. And web visitors, they wanna be entertained, they wanna be engaged, they wanna get something that captures their attention. And you see this all over the place. Any website, there's always uses of images and mixed, mixed in with the text. Text is formatted on different sizes and so on. And this lesson, I wanna show you how you can add in images into your website. So let's go ahead and add in an image. So maybe first of all, we wanna add in for cats, we wanna add in a picture of maybe some animals or something like that. So let's create a brand new line here and the tag to add in images is IMG. So typically what you might be expecting with opening and closing tags is that maybe you'd have a IMG and then you'd put the image there and then you'd close it, but really that doesn't make a lot of sense because the image would typically or should be represented as an attribute, just like it is within the hyperlinks, because with an image, it's just like the line breaks that we saw earlier, um, that this is a self-closing tag. We don't need any other content, we just need to know where that image is located. So let's set up a source for that image and equal out the source. So just like what we did with the hyperlinks, we need to specify where this image is located. So if that image is located within our root folder, it might be something like cat.jpg. But for this lesson, I don't have any content, actually images set up and ready to go. So where am I gonna turn to? I'm gonna turn to the internet. Just as I did with the blind text generator, there's actually a solution for dummy images. And luckily for us, we've got one for cats. So I can go ahead and I can get a color image of a cat. I can get something like this and I can get a path to that cat. Uh, so all we're doing over here is I'm gonna copy out that path to the cat going over to here. And instead of the source being cat.jpg, let's open up and create, just make sure that I'm specifying it properly, so cats, and go back into my code here, save that, and let's go back out to our web page and refresh it, and there we go. So we've got some cats there. And we can also add in some other animals as well. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna get dogs, but maybe for the next paragraph, so instead of cats, I wanna add in some dogs. We don't have dogs, but we can do animals. So maybe, luckily, we might get some uh, some dogs. Same thing for birds. Let's do something like that as well and do some animals there. So now let's go out, refresh our page and see what happens. So luckily for us, we ended up with a dog there. We ended up with a dog and the birds, but that's okay because we never know what we're expecting when we're getting this automatically generated content, placeholder content within our website. So there we go, cats, dogs, and so on. So another thing with images is that a lot of times if somebody is coming in here and maybe the image doesn't load or if they're using a screen reader, they're not gonna be able to tell what's contained within this image. So good practice, best practice with images, always add in those alt tags. So alt tags is basically a way that you can specify to screen readers or in case your image doesn't load, some additional information about what the user or what is intended to be within this space. So this could be of cat and this one would be dog pic and these are just the alt tags and again specifying bird maybe. So we're not sure what's actually coming up here but uh, maybe we get a bird there. So now when I refresh it, I've got a cat, I've got a giraffe, and I've got a way to specify if that image doesn't show up. Uh, so let's just mix up this path here, refresh it. So now the second image isn't gonna show up, but we get something that says dog pick, and this is what's coming from the alt tags, as well as if you're coming in with a screen reader, it'll, instead of, re instead of just trying to show you an image, it'll actually read out what the contents of that image is meant to be. So in the next lesson, we're gonna look at additional ways that we can break apart some of this content. 
So maybe we want to set up a table and we want to have a bunch of information output for the web user. And I'm going to show you how to set up a table in the upcoming lessons. So that's coming up.